Okay, I have muted everybody, I'm sorry. <laughs> this comes out of a, uh, a request um, to give more shiurim and specifically in halacha, which I'm happy to accommodate as much as uh, I'm able to intellectually and uh, time-wise. <laughs> And um, what I thought was that um, very valuable information would be to learn together some of the um, the panimius uh, halacha, halacha, sugyas that um, I learned with my rabbi. And I had a schus that uh, the Rashiva um, wrote a sefer um, called Mishmaris Chaim. So the Mishmaris Chaim is. Um, Actually, I, I worked on that safer. I'm one of the authors of that safer, and um, much of it came from my notebooks during this year. Um, so there's what's in the safer, and that's what's not in the safer. But um, that's what we're doing, and go through halacha halacha to try to get an insight into the halachas itself with the lambdas of the halacha. So that's the goal here, um, and that's going to going to begin Amir Tashem on this very same station. <laughs> At um, on Tuesday morning. Now I said nine fifteen, but there is a um, another shear of Eli Behar that a number of people go to, which which is during that time. So um, I was asked if I could make it from instead of nine nine fifteen <coughs> till ten, if I could make it nine thirty to ten fifteen. So if that's if that's good with the right volume that wants to attend. I'd like to do that, I don't want to conflict. So basically it would mean you'd have to switch if you want to come from Zoom to Zoom <laughs> um, and come onto my Zoom at, uh, at 9.30 and we'll go till approximately 10.15. Um, so um, all in favor say aye. 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 No problem. Aye, aye. Will it be recorded? Um, not necessarily. <laughs> I mean, it's, um, Will notification be sent on the same WhatsApp group or a different WhatsApp group? Um, <clears throat> maybe, I don't know. I could send on this WhatsApp group and start, start something new. But um, recording is a different story um, because it's more of a, um, okay, we'll see. We'll see about that. But if you want to learn this material with me, the right way to do it is to come, <laughs> if you can. Um, you saw her. I'm not sure what you're saying. What are you saying? I just connected, and I and I don't know what uh, what you were speaking about. So I was asking one of the participants. Oh, okay. So I'll be giving a new shear in halacha or yun halacha Tuesdays at nine thirty to um, ten fifteen. And the reason it's not 9.15 is I don't want to conflict with the difference here that's uh, going on of Eli Behar in Nach, which a number of people attend and I think they should attend. So that's what we're doing. So uh, please uh, join me on Tuesday morning. Um, we are in the Nefesh HaChayim, Shardalad Parachaf. And until now, we've been talking mostly about the um, actual benefits of being Lomei Tari Lishma. And um, the, the, the operating Pasuk here, or the Gemara, is that um, there is Ad Shamayim Chastecha and Me'al Shamayim Chastecha. So Ad Shamayim Chastecha is how much is the Chesed of Hashem applying to this person? And the answer is Ad Shamayim, meaning in this world. But that there's a Bechina of where it's me'al shamayim, where it goes even higher, on a higher level. And we talked a lot about that. Don't want to talk about that right now. But uh, the person who learns Tari Lishma, suffice it to say, the person who learns Tari Lishma is otherworldly in the sense that he's, he's working with a different set of rules. And it's me'al shamayim chastecha. I just want to quote to you in, in a summation of all that is the um, letter of the Chazanish, which is uh, very moving to me. It's the Igres Chazanish, Chelek Aleph letter, Yud Gimel. 
And he says that when you look at a person, a Talmud Chacham, who's like a Tari Lishma, you just look at him. So he says, Hunira Kamai Ish, Alabama Sumalach. <laughs> Meaning that um, like everything looks normal about the person, but there's so much going on inside. And he's so connected to the Shemayim. And it's not just from the bottom up that he's reached a high, very high level, but it's Kamal Malach. A Malach is somebody or something, some entity, which is being commanded from top down. So the difference between an Adam and a Malach is an Adam is coming from here and working their way up. And a Malach is coming, a Shliach Hashem, which is coming from there and working his way down. Malach Rafael, Malach Gavriel, Malach Hamavas, Malach Habris. These are all like kind of visitations from a higher place to a lower place. So, you know, the reason I was moved by this um, Chazanish is because Imrab Chadoyme Lamalach Hashem Tzvaka is Tevakesh Tayrimipiv. That one has to have a Rebbe, which is he's viewing as a, a Malach. Now, a Malach, you know, here today, gone tomorrow, um, not necessarily a higher Madrega, but what we're what we need to look at a Rebbe. We have to find ourselves a Rebbe that's Doimel Amalach Hashem Tzvakos that is coming to us with a Shlichus from Hashem, as opposed to a Hevraman, which is also good. <laughs> but but and the only way you can say that somebody is a Shliach from Hashem up to down if he's completely Lishma. And if he's completely Lishma, Lishma means I'm here to learn Torah and teach Torah to you. Um, so that's, or you're there to teach Torah to others. So you have to do it in the Bechin of Amalach, which is just doing the Shlichas of Hashem. There's no personal um, motivations for doing this. It's I'm a Shliach Hashem. So in fact, the, the Tzaddik is an Adam. He's a person, he's born, he dies. Um, but in, in the sense of teaching Torah, as far as teaching Torah goes, he's Kemal Hashem Tzvakai. So the Chazanish comes and he says, Nir Kamai Shavu Ba'amesu Malach. What you see is not what you get. What you, what you see is a part of the picture. There's another part of the picture, which is Mamash attached to Shemai and coming down to us as a, as a gift. So that's Perik up to Perik Chav. Perik, Perik Chav does everyone have it there? So Parachov starts with a new idea. I think it's a new idea and he can't read this fast. Otherwise it seems like an old idea. And in Parachov he says, Vuhu, this person who's Lime Torah Lishma, who Habain Yakir. He's the cherished son. Mibne Palterin de Malka. He's part of the, the palace of the king, meaning he's part of the staff. Each one of these things is something different. So he's a Ben Yakir, he's a Ben Paltrin de Malka, and he's a Ben Hechola de Malka. Paltrin usually is the overall palace of the king, so the whatever that means in, in God's world. And Hechala de Malka is the Kodesh Kodesh, the inner chambers, the Hechal. Hechal Hashem Hu. Asher loy levadoi harishus nesuna. And to this person who's learning Torah Lishma, permission is given, Bechole said any time, Lachapes beginze de Malka Kadisha to be able to browse in the hidden places of the Malka Kadisha. With Hashem's help, we'll try to explain this. The whole Hashaarim El Yonim Psuchim Lafano and all of the upper chambers or the upper gates is open to him. My Marim Zachronim Levrachan, the Gemara says this in Saita, Kola Isaac Betayram Mitoich Doichak. 
Rabbi Yachi Bar Chanino Aimer, Af ein ha pargod nino bifano. Pargoid is, well, I can't say I know what a pargoid is, but a pargoid means a machitza. So there's a there's a division between mayim lamayim. There's a division between the oylemas al yoinim and the oylemas tachtoinim. It's divided by a pargoid. This is invisible to the naked eye, but there's this pargoid which is dividing us, and the pargoid is like a glass ceiling, which doesn't let you get further. Anybody is learning Torah in the through a difficult time. Even the pargoid is not blocking him. One more paragraph before we explain. We talked about entering into the Shar, the Sha'arim. So the Shar we're talking about is the Shar of Torah, Hakidosha. Lahasig uli stakel. Wow. It says that and then it makes a list of what you're zaycha to. And one of them is you will have a revelation of the hidden parts of the Torah. The Gemara says an Ave deserve a loyoid. Things which have been covered from others have been revealed to him. And here, let's go back a minute. Here, we're no longer talking about um, my uh, lifestyle or the benefits of my life or the miracles that I can um, Bizochatu or perform or a different level of shechina or a different level of siyata dishmaya. Um, we're not talking about that here. We've talked about that before. What we're talking about here is getting to a um, informational place, if you will, a place where you know more than everybody else. Meaning, person A is loyme tayr lishma. And person B is Laime Tari Shalai Lishma. The person who's Laime Tari Lishma, they're both the same IQ. Maybe they're even both putting in the same hours. But the person who's learning Tari Lishma comes to a place of learning, which he's calling the Share Tari Hakadosha. And in that place, Migalan Lai Raze Tari, it's revealed to him. This is no longer a place where you can go intellectually. It's no longer a place where you're gonna think about it and make a hakira, that you're gonna be able to get some, something to this place. But when you get to this place, migalin loy rose that's what it says in Pirkei Abbas. Hashem reveals to you, listen, you're, you know, you're the, you're haben yakir, you're a ben, Palter and Malka, you're a Ben Bayis. You're a Ben Hechalo de Malka. And here, you're Zoha to hear things and understand things that you wouldn't understand otherwise. So, Rabbi, two, two questions, uh, if I may. One is, is so is this a moment? Is this a Madrega or both? That's question number one. And question number two is, I mean, these are like, Kind of mind-blowing descriptions that you know i know that when i'm when i hear a, like a, a chiddish and it totally rearranges how i think about something i feel a sense of a physical sensation of joy is there a does a person know that this is happening okay good questions in terms of is this a moment like some kind of a uh, aha moment um the words of the Nefesh HaChaim is asher loy levadoi to this guy or woman harishus nesuna b'chol eis l'chapes begins a demalka kadisha you're in the inner chambers you can browse, you can look you can see so let me um, ask a question and then try to explain 
the best I can. The we said if you what he says here is that you're learning tire when it's difficult for you. It's not natural to you for you to learn tire. It's difficult to learn tire. Like he speaks later about the guy who gets up in the middle of the night to learn tire. That's not fun. You got to get out of bed. You got to learn tire. You know, this is not about hot cocoa and marshmallows. A person who's learning tire through um, a difficult situation physically, financially, a person who learns Torah in a ghetto or a concentration camp. That's why I'm a Torah mitoich doicha. Pick your doicha. What does that have to do with this? That's my question. What's that have to do with what we're learning here? We're not talking about here who's somebody who's going the extra mile and persevering and pushing through a difficult situations. We're talking about Lai Torah lishma. So what's the connection between Lai Torah lishma and Lai mitoich doicha? Somebody want to answer that question for me? Could be Isn't that the that uh, <clears throat> that you're overcoming your teva, so Hashem overcomes the limits of teva, and normally that's the pargod. Yes, look, leave the mida connected mida out for a minute. What what is the connection? In other words, you're you're saying good, but you're answering the wrong question. You're not answering the question I'm asking. What's the what's the connection between Moimed Mitoicha Doichak and Moimed Lishma? I would uh, I would offer I, I might offer a thought. Um, a person who's Lomed Mitoch Dochak, you're talking about a person who is uh Lomed Mitochak, he has difficulty focusing on the limud because of the dochak. He had, the natural tendency would be to focus on the dochak. And he's able to set it aside, miraculously almost, and to, and to learn Torah lishma. Uh, he's he's, he's uh, completely um, unprotected from these so natural- Are you saying that that's that, mimela lishma? Like because of the dochak, you're saying it's mimela lishma if he learns? So um, let me let me. No, I'm um, saying a person is overcoming his natural tendencies, and therefore what? Vilochen, and and therefore his 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 sachar, his sachar is even higher. His 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 ma'amad is higher. His 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 dimension in terms of his uh, closeness to Hakadosh Baruch Hu is even higher because he has transcended. The human element. So, like, Ephraim, you're saying very similar to what Yitzhak is saying, but um, I don't want to, I think we're all skipping a point, a very simple point. And that is the following that there, there's really no way to know whether somebody's learning Lishma or not learning Lishma, um, or whether we're learning Lishma or we're not learning Lishma. There's always like a number of reasons why we do something, you know, like, like, uh, why am I giving a shear right now? Part of it is lishma, part of it is shalai lishma. Yeah, I mean, that's like, how do you know? And I think this is so simple. Like you, you both keep talking about the mida connected mida of it. That's why I'm not asking what's I'm asking what's the indication over here. The indication is that the one of the only ways to know whether somebody is doing something lishma is when it's really not good for him to be doing this thing. It's hard to believe, let's say, as an example, extreme example, it's hard to believe that somebody would do the mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem, Shalai Lishma. And somebody, unless he's suicidal. But uh, then I guess there's a Shalai Lishma. But a person wants to live and they're giving up their life. So the reason, one of the reasons I think that we're so machabed, the person that gave up their life on Kiddush Hashem, is because, hey, that was Lishma. <laughs> That wasn't to get rich. It wasn't to get covered. You know, although, you know, these these days, you know, I, I don't know these days, but I find people sit and think about what are they going to say about him and their eulogy? <laughs> you know, so, like, so, okay, kind of silly, but, but just that's the chat and 
a covered might see an asad in <laughs> Like, I get, I'm worried about the covet even when the covet's not going to mean anything to me one way or the other, probably. But what I am saying is that if somebody's doing something, that's a pretty good indication. And I think this is where the, the Nefesh HaChaim is coming from. That's a pretty good indication that I'm doing it lishma. That's all. Simple. So um, it's, it's like a, a simon. It's not a siba, but it's a simon that I'm doing something lishma. Now, Rasen, yeah, uh, you talked about Razin as something that we could not achieve intellectual through our intellectual kaychas. So, are uh, Razin nogel halacha or just an insight? Oh, so good. Thank you for that. So, what I think is as following. I want to say it correctly. Um, and it's it's actually quite a big Kiddush of Nefesh HaChaim. And that is that, um, you know, like we were talking before of Ad HaShemayim Chastecha and Me'al Shemayim Chastecha. In the world of Chachma, there's Chachma. There's Ad HaShemayim, Me'al HaShemayim. Ad HaPargoid, Me'al HaPargoid. And here, um, Yitzhak Ephraim, let me just time, tweak what you were saying before. It's more than a mita connected mita. It's Mechapes Beginze de Malka Kadisha is a completely different level of insight that a person can achieve by rising above their natural tendencies. What, what, I, what I mean is, hakavana is, you know, like in everything, you know, in, in let's take a muscle of uh, medicine. So, you know, you can have, you could have certain symptoms. You can go to a doctor, a doctor will say this works and it does work. He's right. And you take it, you get better or you don't get better. And maybe that's good enough for most of um, the problems that we might have. But sometimes, you know, like doctors can get um, flabbergasted. We don't know. We don't understand. And they're humble enough to admit it. At that moment, um, you need somebody with a different level of insight. It's not more information. Not he took another half a year in medical school. Not that he specialized in this particular illness. No. So certain people are medically intuitive and they have a, a, a certain insight into the body, what's going on over here. Um, and it's Elos Elois and Sibois Hasibois, as far as he's able to do or she's able to do, to be able to have an insight into what's really going on here. And the same thing is true with a psychologist. Uh, like psychology, so there are a number, number of, uh, of uh, shitois in psychology, there's narrative psychology, there's there's all kinds of levels of therapy. And then, um, and I'm not even saying it's better, maybe it's not, maybe maybe something which is not behavioristic is even better, it, maybe behavioristic is better, but I'm just saying there's two things. And then there's somebody who can somehow or another have the chachma, let's call it for this moment, a chachma law of really getting it. Not everybody gets it. And a lot of people talk like they're like they get it, but and they're talking in very very um, you know uh, appropriate words and and uh, it, it, very very impressive. I meet people like this all the time, like they talk like they're very smart, but they're actually not very smart. <laughs> you, you, they're 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 not getting the insight. That's already when it comes to Torah. So the first thing is we're talking about that one gift, which takes you above, above what's normal to understand, above what's intellectual pursuit, uh, it's, it's above. Now maybe in science, maybe, um, you know, Einstein or Newton were able to break this barrier and get beyond the Pargoid Lahavdil, maybe. But in, in Torah, here's the difference. 
if you break beyond the pargoid, you have a certain insight, not just into Tyra, but since Istakel, Baraisa, Bara Alma, and we're talking about all the different Sha'arim and Sha'arim mean the gateways through which HaKadosh Baruch Hu has created the world, how he's created trees, how he's created people, how he's created our das. So now, instead of being here as in part of this and saying, hey, I see what's going around on around me, you're getting a look from the shar itself, from the Torah, that, from Hashem himself, as to what's really going on here. And that's a different- Could I just ask? I just wanted to ask the Arba Shanichnesu Lepardes. Is that all Lishma? No. <laughs> no. Because we seek from the results. The results were. That so Rabbi Akiva did it. Lishma. Look very clearly, other than Rabbi Akiva, it was a failed right. attempt. And why was it a failed attempt? Because one was trying to get above nature without including nature. It was trying to get into nature without including the above. Um, and Benasa hits its vimeshim, Ben Zoyma hits its vinifka, and Acher Katzer Ben So it, it, was, it, it was this complete integration where let's talk about Rabbi Akiva. I don't begin to understand somebody like Rabbi Akiva. And every time I learn something that he says, even a halacha, I'm like blown away because there was such insight into where we were in this world, where we are in life, what's going on with the Romans, what's going on with Mashiach, what's going on with suffering. And there was a certain insight that Rabbi Kiva had where he was able to say, let's say, Komanda uh -huh. which, which was which was I want I want to call it unless somebody has a better word, I want to call it like he gets it. He understands it from God's point of view. So, Why so he wasn't happens? entering, he wasn't entering into the Pardes in order to get a goodie, to get into more and there's a, he, would, he was just doing it Lishma, we're saying, because otherwise it's not Lishma. Right. But, but I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm following your logic. What, what is your logic? How do you know he was Lishma? I'm saying it, it, if he had a different, if he had a motivation because he wanted to get to more, you know, I don't know, higher levels of insight. So maybe that takes away from the lishma aspect. Yes, correct. That is correct. So, Linyanenu, let's just make sure we understand this because, you know, it goes back to the, um, you know, to the Chazanish, Nira Kamaish, Avobama Sumalach, meaning that, you know, like, if we're, if we're talking about a, a person who's lamentary lishma on a regular basis, maybe which is indicated by the fact that it's lamed mitoich doichak. Maybe he's not lamed mitoich doichak, maybe he doesn't have a dochak, but still he's learning Torah lishma. So he's privy to the ginze, the malka kadisha. I'm not seeing, you know, you know, when you're in a situation there's only so much you could understand about that situation. You know, it's hard to, you know, like, it's hard to see things like from an outside view and to understand what really happened there. We can do that sometimes with history. You can look at a period in history and say, okay, I get it. You know, this happened and 1790, this happened in 1812, this happened in, in 19, and all of a sudden, you know, you can see how the pieces come together. When you're in a situation, uh, who, who can really see it? You can guess maybe, but who can really see what caused what and why and where and, and where we're going? So the person who's lame at Lishma can see it, why? Because you're really, you know, I believe, by the way, lahavdil elaf havdalos. I believe that there's other disciplines to try to get to this place through different levels of um, of meditation and trying to reach a place of enlightenment. 
And I've told you everything I know about the subject. But enlightenment means that to me, you know, this kind of, uh, you know, and there's a difference between, again, Lahavdil, I'm just, there's a difference between Buddhist nirvana and Hindu nirvana. They're all different. <laughs> They're all trying to reach a different place. One's trying to get beyond the Gilgulim, one's trying to get. But let's talk about it in yeshivisha terms. The, the Madrega of Bittal, where, you know, where what I am, you know, how I feel today, you know, is I'm, I'm above that. It doesn't make a difference. I don't know who's on that level, but let's say it doesn't make any difference. I'm here for the klal, I'm here for the world, I'm like a malach. So that person has the ability, because you're in that place, to get above the entire world into what he calls the share hatayra hakadusha. You're right there at the shar. Begins a hamelech. And this, by the way, when you get there, is not another level of chachma. It's a level of megalunloi. Megalunloi. It's it's a um, at that point it's a gift. Aha. Now I understand what the world is all about. <clears throat> so, like Rabbi Hebel, <clears throat> sorry, what you were saying last week, the story of the Belzer Rebbe, who said, like, I didn't, what's your surin? Like, I didn't have your surin. Is that because he was on that level where it says to him, it, it wasn't like how we would see it? That, that was the point of the star, story. So, but you know, like, we look at it from an attitudinal point of view. He's got a good attitude, you know, like he's able to deal with it. What, what Rabbi Akiva was saying when he said, Koman David Rahman al of at the Pashat of Shad, is I'm not saying it'll be okay. You have to say there, Hashem has a plan. I'm on such a place, I'm in such a, a world where I realize that what's going on now is actually toif. Or like his Rebbe said, even more clear. Gamzula Taiva. And the uh, many many of the farms say that, you know, Nochamish Gamzu said Gamzula Taiva. That's not why, I mean, he was called Nochamish Gamzu because he came from a city called Gamzu, a place in Israel called Tel Gamzu. But they nicknamed him Gamzula Taiva because that's what he would understand. His Talmud, Rabbi Akiva, said, Koman David Rachmanullah Tavavid, which is the same concept. And the kasha that the, the Rishonim asked already is that chayva the moimer dover b'shem b'loshen rabbi. Like, why, why are you improving on Shakespeare? So if, if Nachem ish gamzu, the rabbi said gamzu l'toiva, which is easy enough words to understand, what do you have to touch it out? You say, gachol man dover rachman l'tav of it. And the, the, the Svarim say, I think, the Bnei Soscher and others, um, they say that um, if you're Medayik, Koman David Rahmana Litav of it, it's for the good. Where his Rebbe said, Gamzu Litav. It's, it's a gufa, ha gufa good. It's a good, it's Taiv Bats. Okay. Meaning to say. Can you elaborate a second? Which one's better or I'm not sure if I. Gamzu Litav is a higher Madrega. And Rabbi Akiva was mutter to be Mishana. Milosh and Rabbi, because you can only say what you feel. And what he was able to feel in his big, big madrega of Nichnas Apartes, of Nichnas Vishalom, Biyotze Vishalom, what he was clearly able to feel was that God has a plan. It's good. So it's, 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 I'm good. Nachem Ishkamsu saw the good in this. He didn't see it as bad, like the Belzer Rebbe. You know? like, <laughs> he didn't see what, what's bad. What, what is the gum? What is the gum? Doesn't gam imply I certain things I perceive as good, but this which I experience as bad is gam zula tova. This too is really not bad. only not what I tov? perceive. Not only what you perceive as good is good. Gam zu he was talking. Not, not not only what you perceive as good is good, but even what you perceive as bad is good. My perception is that the bad is good. So it's it's very very. Um, Dachistic, the difference between the two, but suffice it to say that there's um, there's levels of insight. This is not just like levels of betachen, of 
you know, of how to how to um, suffer like a Jew. Um, that's not what this is. We're talking about getting it in a very, very deep way. And this, by the way, is a gift. It's all over Chazal, but it's a gift. Megalon lay raze, raze the Torah. Megalon lay the deep secrets, but those deep secrets are the real why, if you will, of why everything, of, of, of what's going on in this world. He's getting a, uh, he, he's right there at the, at the, um, at the source of it. Gamzula Taifa. So, i just give a, a, a marshal of this in Chazal. Chazal say that Avram Avinu, famous Chazal, Avram Avinu was um, busy trying to understand the world. And finally he came to the point, he was busy, he was, he was a, you know, a tzaddik and an intelligent person, obviously. And he's asking questions which no one dared ask. He's asking questions which were questions because people took things for granted. People took for granted that the stars have power and the sun has power in them. From, you know, Mashu Chaserpo. So until he finally came to the point where it was about 40, where he said, Ain Bira, it's lashing over there, Ain Ain Loilam Blight. Bira. Yefshir Labira Bulaimanik. Yefshir Labira Bulaimanik. When he came to this point of understanding that no, 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 no. Yefshir Labira Bulaimanik, this is not a, uh, this is not an end. This is an intellectual conclusion of Yefshir Labira. But then Chazal continue and they say, Do you get it? I don't know if you've seen it this way before. There was a clear two steps. I'm, I'm doing everything I can to try to understand what's going on and by the process of elimination in my chachma I understand that there's no such thing EF shilabira b'leimanik I can't lo yechaliyot you know you don't have to be Avram Avinu I mean you know I was reading an article last night about you know just human biology right here within us you know I'm not talking about the sun and the stars, and you know, it's it's half of a fellow. This <laughs> it's a, it's just politic how a chromosome, a cell, you know, has kind of wreaked such havoc even in the whole world. It's it, it's a pella how the body normally protects itself. <laughs> it's the built-in mechanisms that are here. There is no machine like this. <laughs> There's no machine like this. So I can easily, relative, if I'm honest, I could come to the conclusion. As EF Shalom Bira. But then there's another point, another place. Hitzitzalov Bal Habira. Hashem said, Hadrahman Samaska. Hitzitzalov Bal Habira until Akarish Barhu Bhai Doyavats my bent down and whispered in his ear. And he said, Anihu Bal Habira. Here's the answer. So there was a question and an answer. To put it more Correctly, there was betaycha oilam and lamalo min oilam. There was aretz, there was shemaim. So we could talk to Hashem every day, and we do. But for Hashem to talk to us, that's a different, <laughs> different madriga. Yeah? Miad hitzit ala bal habir v'aymer anihu bal habir. So when we're talking is, is about the... Is Hashem talking to us? Is that the Razin? So that that's the Razin Meraisa. That's the Razin, the Malk begin, the Razin 
Megalon loy rose Torah means that I can clear and I can grow and I can think and I can harva And then all of a sudden, let's call it enlightenment. A level of insight can happen where oh, I get the whole thing. Is this different from Ruch HaKodesh? No, we're going to talk about Ruch HaKodesh. But it is different. I want to make this point while well, since you mentioned that. It is different than Nevoa. Because Nevoa is sort of like uh, Hashem saying, this is what's going on in history. I'm going to give them a little insight here. That's what Nevoa is. So he picks the Navi, who's Shalim B'midasa and Shalim B'gufa, and and. Uh, and, and, he, and he gives them the insight, and he's mechuyev to tell it to the world. A navi. A navi is Lashon Neif. Tamachon. So with Bilon, he wasn't, Bilon wasn't a, a loy medlich shmok kind of person. He still had Nebo. Right. Hashem chose him for whatever reason to, to give a message. Possible. It's not that he didn't, Bilon wasn't Mekayim, the Rambam's uh, criterion, but that's a different story. That's a different sugya. Talmud Chacham is in a different place. Talmud Chacham, the Tzlaim Atari Lishma, it's not that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave him a message to give the world. No. He's understanding it from the Makar HaElam, from the Shari HaTar HaKadoshah, the Stakel Barai Zabar Alma, and he's seeing a whole different view. Navi doesn't necessarily see that. And I'll tell you another Chiddush, the Talmud Chacham that does see it doesn't necessarily have to be Megalit. Do you know that, um, you know, the, the Navi, Asir Lich Baish Nevuase, if Hashem tells you to say, you got to say. Not a lot of hold it back. You have to say the Nevuah. That you got a Nevuah, you have to say the Nevuah. That's, that's why you got it. Talmud Chacham that gets an insight of Megalim like Raz and Taira, listen carefully to me because this is extremely important. He has no Chiyav to say it. He's an educator. He'll say what he wants to say. But it also could be that he wouldn't be able to, to relay it because it's Raz Torah that he was only given the gift to understand. Whatever it is, either he doesn't, they don't have that gift, as Dan's saying. And just you know, like, so the Gemara says, a Lashen of Megala Tefach So, you know, you know, people are going to the, to the, to the Rav HaTzadik and they're saying, Teach me, teach me the insight. Even if he gets it, he doesn't have to say, you know, like as, as we all say, those who say don't know and those who know don't say. But a Navi doesn't have that luxury because a Navi is not a gift for him. A Navi is a, is a gift for the people that Hashem chose this mouthpiece to, to, to convey. So there's no such thing as the Navi saying, and they got in trouble for this, the Navim. The Navi is sitting there and, 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 and Hashem is telling him, this is how you piece together pieces of history. This is how you know where we are right now in the world. This is how you know that there's what 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 Harbin Beis HaMikdash is and what Binyan Beis HaMikdash is and what's causing it. Like, you know, if, if, if some political analyst is looking at the Roman or the Babylonian occupation of Jerusalem, so they're making a hundred rushes. They could write books, and they have written books about the about the Babylonian occupation. But the Navi's coming, and he's saying, and that's his message to the people. But the Talmud Chacham has a different type of insight, and that was, by the way, the case in the Bayusheni, where they were Megala Tefach of Sinas Chinam, but they also understood the inner workings of Akharish Baruch the big big tzaddikim, the big big Talmidei Chachamim. And whether they were Gala or they weren't Megala, Hester Dover, sometimes you have to hide things. The Anshe Knesset Agdoyla hid more than they said. Maybe they spoke amongst themselves. And I could tell you that even today, Gedoyla Adar, Tzadiki Adar, in my opinion, and I've seen Agilu Tefach, they, they don't let on how much they know because they get it. And they have the insight, and not everything is for the people to. Uh, are, not everything are people able to to hear. Not everything are people able to hear. So what they have to say, they say. What they don't have to say, they don't say. And and that's a different madriga. 
Okay, I have to go. So um, let me just remind you then, Amir Tzachem, if you want, um, Tuesday morning, same channel, same time, not the same time, 9.30. And um, well, Amir Tzachem will, will, you know, please participate. Have a good shot. Thank you. Good shot. And a freilichen to be shvat. We should all be good to his chat. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.